there was an engineer that worked for Tom Watson with IBM way back in the day, and he made a mistake and it cost the company $10 million. Mr. Watson asked him to come to his office. He came with a letter of resignation in his pocket, handed it to Mr. Watson, and he says, what's this? And he says, it's my resignation, sir. He says, why are you resigning? He says, I assumed that you wanted me to. I just cost the company $10 million. He said, yeah, but that's a $10 million investment we have in you now. We need more engineers like you that are willing to take those risks. I don't want anybody in the hospital to make a $10 million mistake, but that story has stuck with me, and I suppose maybe it, uh, it made me think about the fact that we shouldn't be afraid, any of us, I shouldn't be afraid of making a mistake or we'll never move forward. Twenty-five years ago, um, Gwinnett was a relatively small uh, agrarian bedroom community for Atlanta. That, that's what we were, and it was 90% white. Uh, today, it's the second most populous county in the state, and it is the, the most diverse county in the southeastern United States. When I came here, I realized there was a tremendous opportunity. He's worked for the for-profit side in, in healthcare, and that's great, but the not-for-profit side you're really a part of the community. Your board members are community leaders. The nice thing about the Gwinnett Medical is, under Phil's leadership, is they're also engaged community partners. And it's not just about them, it's how can we help uh, the quality of life uh, in the entire Gwinnett community. And so they're engaged with the chamber, they're engaged with the school system, they're engaged with the colleges, uh, they're engaged with the cities, they're engaged with the CIDs, they're engaged with all the major parts of the community uh, because it's important for them and for us uh, to work together, and Phil gets that. The culture between the, the hospital and, and the uh, community is outstanding. The hospital system here is spot on in terms of working together. And so when we got here and we started the open heart program, the cancer program was enhanced, uh, some of the other programs that we have, it was obvious to me that the community did want uh, to be involved and did want to help us uh, accomplish that. It's uh, remarkable to see uh, the extent to which GMC has been engaged in both economic development, healthcare development, and community development for the broader community. There's a shortage of nursing across the country. That's not uh, unique to the those of us here in Gwinnett or Atlanta or Georgia. And Phil, of course, understands that. The relationship that we have with Gwinnett Tech is one that, that precedes me. And it was nice because we know that they supply us with workers uh, and that's good for us, but they needed help financially to make sure that they could have instructors to teach those students that would come to us. We looked at it as being exactly a symbiotic relationship between the hospital and Gwinnett Tech they felt the same way. What Gwinnett Medical Center brings to us is the opportunity for our students to actually get hands-on real-life experience at their facilities, working side-by-side -side with their professional staff. And those professional staff then help us create the workforce needed in the community for healthcare. At the same time, uh, we at Gwinnett, Georgia Gwinnett College uh, were, once we got accredited, uh, after we'd started the college, uh, began to craft and create our own nursing program, which is a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. Uh, and Phil did the same with us. I mean, he helped us uh, to understand what a, a 21st century nurse needs to be able to know and do, uh, and then helped us uh, to implement that program. One of the best things about the partnership between Winnet Technical College and Winnet Medical Center is that as a student, I have the opportunity to be here for every clinical rotation. Getting the knowledge from Winnet Technical College and coming to Winnet Medical Center and applying that knowledge with our skills was one of the best experiences I had uh, during the program. As a result of the engagement by the Gwinnett Medical Center with the local colleges and other colleges around the region as well, he's doing what he can to provide um, talented, dedicated healthcare professionals uh, for the people of this community. The Concussion Institute um, started way back in about 2006 when I got here, and it was a, a, an individual's community member, Paige Haven's daughter, had a concussion in soccer. What the daughter went through was very personal to Paige, and she, she asked us if we could do something uh, along the lines of Concussion Institute. We looked at some programs around the United States. 
we patterned it after Pittsburgh, I think, and, and we got some professionals involved so that we could do what we need to do for baseline studies to see where the child is. And so we've done, gosh, 60, 70,000 baselines. We were the first ones in the Southeast to do that. Uh, and it really was an innovative, imaginative program that contributed considerably to uh, not only today's healthcare, uh, but it will provide information for uh, decades. Uh, it's become the model to emulate. I believe it's about 18 schools that are really involved in it now, and I think that will spread. Paige, in her passion to get this thing rolling, said, not only do we want to open a concussion institute, which we did, uh, then we also got a concussion caravan. And so we can actually go out into the field or to sporting events and do the testing right there. When you look at uh, all of the new programs uh, that have come on board under Phil's leadership, uh, as I say, it's not a result of uh, accident or serendipity, it's a result of uh, sustained, insightful, visionary leadership, and that's to Phil's credit. When we opened the Concussion Institute, all I remember is, a, is authorizing one um, you know, athletic trainer and we had 76. And I'm sitting there in the audience and I said, we've got 76 athletic trainers? When did that happen? If people have to ask me to do those things, that's not gonna work. Somebody did that on their own and thank goodness they did because it was working well in this community. There's a story about you know, a duck from the surface of the water up, they're very calm, but they're paddling like crazy below. That's sort of him. I mean, he's always thinking, but he's very calm and he keeps everybody else calm. Phil is the quintessential uh, public servant. I mean, he really cares deeply uh, about the community that he serves. He cares about the people uh, who work for him. He's not the type person that thinks he can do everything himself. He delegates and he also likes to see them succeed. He leads with authority, but he doesn't project that authority in a, in a rude, uh, uh, condescending manner. He allows people to be able to think on their own. He's just one of the good guys. Phil is the quintessential leader of character. Uh, and so uh, I have been uh, not only his friend, but an admirer since I've known him, uh, because there aren't very many uh, like Phil.